Welcome back to Toy Trends with me, Scott, Toy Guru Nightlick. I've been in the toy industry for 20 years, and a lot of what I've picked up is on what makes a good toy, what makes a good toy property that will sell toys. And today, in order to demonstrate that, we're going to do a sort of deep dive into the differences between Batman and Harry Potter, why one of them does better toy sales than the other. And yeah, I'm a, you know, I'm a fan of both properties. I, I've been a fan of Batman for years. He influenced even characters I created. And Harry Potter, I'm a big fan of that too. In fact, I just bequeathed all the books to my daughter, who is going through them at breakneck speed. And they're both amazing characters, yet only one of them translates really well to kid-targeted toy product versus the other. And yes, collector product is awesome, but 80% of toy sales are to kids, moms, and dads. And Batman kind of sells in whatever version you're going to do him. He's always dominating the toy aisle. Versus Harry Potter, for toys for kids, has kind of taken a back seat. So why is this? Especially when you have millions, if not billions, of children around the world reading the Harry Potter books, engaging in the Harry Potter world, familiar with it, before they even start watching the Harry Potter movies, which then go on to gross more millions and billions of dollars. Yet, Harry Potter toys that are aimed at kids peg warm, and they just sit there at retail. Why is this? All right, so let's go back in time a little bit and look at the very first Harry Potter movie, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. When that was coming out, everybody wanted the toy rights. They saw this is going to be the next Star Wars, right? Everything is always the next Star Wars. Mattel was in the lead. They gassed up their Hot Wheels, and they got it. They got the license to make kid product, and they made all sorts of kid product. They made action figures and play, play sets. Wait, this, this one looks really familiar. Why have I... Why have I seen this playset someplace before? It's bringing back odd memories. I, I, that's interesting. All right, we'll do a whole other video about the reuse of toys later. Mattel also made games. They made dolls. They, they did basically tons of different categories. They even won Toadie Awards. They even made broomsticks that turned out to be vibrators that had to be pulled from market because... Yeah, just, just, just Google it. We better not talk about that one. But the point is... Mattel had the kid license for Harry Potter, but at the end of the day, they weren't selling. They could not sell Harry Potter action figures to kids, yet Batman, year on year on year, no matter how, shall we say, outlandish the concept, Batman toys constantly sell to kids. Harry Potter, don't get me wrong, it does great business with collectibles. They do everything from, you know, miniatures, you know, things from Noble Collection. They do, you know, uh, collect little kind of collectibles, you know, not action figures, but figures that are meant just to be collectibles. They do wands, huge business in wands, uh, you know, especially the high-end ones that can be, you know, displayed just like this here. And they do adult action figures. They do collectible figures for adults who want to display, collect, and show off their collection, which is a different play pattern from kids with action figures who are more, well, we call it doinky-doink play. Sometimes in the industry where, you know, one character versus the other and you're playing out imaginative adventures on the floor with figures like this. This is one of Mattel's figures from the original line that just did not meet expectations. So why is it? Well, it's because of something called toyetic qualities. And a lot of people think I make this word up, but no, it's, it's, it's a legitimate word. It basically means innate qualities in a property which will translate well into toys. Now, Batman, for example, one of those is he wears a mask. Not just any mask, he wears the best mask out there because it's a half mask, meaning you can still see the face, or at least the, the, the lips and the nose, versus Spider-Man is fully covered. With Batman, you can still feel like yourself, your you pointing out of this mask, versus Spider-Man, you're completely covered, you're unknown. Still a good mask, but Batman's mask is better from a toyetic standpoint. Batman also has a really cool vehicle that kids can see themselves in, and see themselves doing heroic things in versus Harry Potter, well, he doesn't get around in a, you know, cool, tricked-out car. He gets around in a 
train. A, an old steam train. You know, yeah, kids are into trains, but it's more like it's a choo-choo going around the Christmas tree, not going through, you know, the streets of Gotham or Hogsmeade. Batman also has gadgets. He's got a ton of gadgets, and they're on his belt, and they do visual things, and they help him solve crimes and defeat bad guys, and you could see them, and they look cool. Harry Potter has a book of spells, and, you know, some of the spells are visual. You know, he sometimes blasts lightning out of his, out of his uh, wand, but they're not as visual as Batman. And this is what I'm always talking about, the emotional connection to product and understanding that. Harry Potter is a huge franchise, but it doesn't have the qualities that translate into kid product. And that is why I offer a service called Toyetic Script Review. For studios and screenwriters writing scripts for movies who want to ensure they're going to sell toys, come to my website, spectrecreative.com. Click right on the top, you'll see it. I review scripts and I will help develop them into more toyetic elements so that way you avoid things like this, a huge giant movie that doesn't sell toys, and you're more something like this, a movie that has toyetic elements that will actually sell if, you know, someone would let them. But that is how you build a better movie by doing it from the start. You have to think about how it's going to translate into toys at the writing stage, not just pass the script off to a toy company and try to smash toys into it, which is really what happens. Companies will get a script and they'll be like, okay, well now how in the world do we make this into a toy line? Versus if you do a toyetic script review from day one, well, you can build those elements into the story, into the characters, into the powers, into the vehicles, so that you can dominate the toy aisle. There's a reason Star Wars works so well. It has toyetic elements. And by including those in the script from day one, you can help ensure your film project is going to have very, very robust toy sales. In fact, so much that they could even outpace box office, home video, home DVD, and everything else. Toy sales can be the biggest revenue driver, but you have to have Toyetic elements from day one. And Spectre Creative loves to help. So give us a call. Toyetic Script Review, a service only we provide at spectrecreative.com.